Can you guess the output of this simple Java program? Well, this Java program is related to exception handling. You can see this Java program has try catch finally blocks. Okay, the execution of this program starts from the main method and within a main method int i equal to 1. Next, the control comes to try block and within a try block, the i value is incremented by 1. So this i plus plus is basically a pre-increment. This will increment the i value by 1. Now i becomes 2. Next, there is a no exception thrown from the try block. This catch block will be skipped. Next, the control comes to the finally block. The finally block will always execute regardless of whether an exception occurs or not. And within a finally block, you can see the free increment statement. So this will increment i value by 1. So here i is 2. Now i becomes a 3. Next, system.println i. So this will basically print the value 3. If I run this program, you can see the output 3. The key point here is to understand the flow between try, catch and finally blocks. Here is a one more Java tricky coding question. What happens if you put the return statement in the try or a catch block? Will the finally block execute? Yes, if you put the return statement inside the try or a catch block, the final block will always execute regardless of whether the exception will occur or not. Let us quickly take a look into the demo. As a main class, it has a divide method. Within a divide method, we have a try, catch and finally block. And within the main method, the divide method is called by passing a value 10, 0. Within a divide method, we have a try block. It has a return statement. A has a value 10 divided by B has a value 0. So this gives arithmetic exception. This catch block will handle that exception and return the value minus 1. So before returning this minus 1, the finally block will get executed. Okay, so if I run this program, you can see the exception message will first print and then finally block will execute and then it will print this and then the minus one will print here. The finally block will always execute regardless of whether the exception is occurred or not. And even you know try and catch block has a return statement. Let us take a look into one more Java coding question. What happens if you put the system dot exit inside a try or a catch block? Will the finally block execute? The answer is no. If system.exit is called inside a try or a catch block, the Java virtual machine terminates the program immediately and the finally block won't be executed. Let us take a look into the demo. Here is a main class within that a main method. Within a main method a try block. Within a try block, the system.println prints inside a try block to the console. Next system.exit method is called. After that a catch block and finally block. Now the question is if we put the system.exit inside a try block then the final block will get executed or not whenever jvm encounters this system.exit method then jvm will terminate the program immediately if i run this program you can see only the inside try block is printed the finally block haven't executed hence this finally block is executed string is not printed to the console so remember if system.exit method is used inside a try or catch block the finally block will be skipped and the program will terminate immediately what is the output of this java program well, this kind of a tricky coding questions you may get in a Java interviews. So here is a main class. It has a any method as a static method. Within that, here is a try, catch and finally block. So here try block return the value 10 without throwing any exception. And the control comes to catch block. Since there is a no exception thrown from the try block, the catch block will be skipped. And next control comes into finally block. And here you can see within a final block, there is a return 30 statement. In Java, if the finally block contains a return statement, it overrides any return values from the try block and catch blocks. So when any method is called from the main method, it will always return 30 and that is what will get printed. So here let me run the program, you can see the value 30. Alright, remember, even though the try block and catch block has a return statements, the finally block will still get executed. And if finally block has a return statement, then it will override all the return values from the try block and catch block. Okay, great. What is the output of this code snippet? So here is a main class within that uh, any method as a static method. Within this method, integer variable i equal to 1 and then try, catch and finally block. Next here, within a try block, there is a i equal to i plus 1 statement. So this increments i value by 1. So now the i becomes 2. Next, return statement return i. So as we know that the final block will always execute regardless of whether the try and catch block has a return statement. In a final block you can see i equal to i plus 3. i value is 2 so 2 plus 3 becomes a 5. Note that although the final block modifies the i value it does not change the return value of the try block. The return value that was determined by the try block is still pending and will be returned after the final block completes its execution. It means the output should be 2. If I run this program, you can see the output is 2 because there is a no return statement in the finally block. So the method proceeds to the return pending value from the try block which is 2. 